First of all, apologies that I'm quite late this week. I was lazy. <laughs> and second, um, this is one of the videos I started in early January, I think, that failed and I had to reorder stuff or order new stuff. So, yeah, it starts with a bit of a disaster. So I still hope you will enjoy it. So I stumbled upon a technique on Pinterest. And I tried to find out how to pronounce it. <laughs> that was not very uh, very successful. One suggestion was cloisois. The other one was cloisois. Then we had cloison, cloison, and the most toe curling one, cloisonne, which was when I uh, tried to get a result in German. <laughs> it is written as cloison, uh, cloison home, whatever. I guess it's French in origin. And uh, the technique basically is an enamel or similar to an enamel uh, uh, technique. You get an, a finished product that looks very stained glass-ish to me. I am quite sure that I am not the first to try that out, but I thought it would be interesting to try exactly that with resin. I did look up some uh, some of the techniques behind it and it looked like you have a thicker or a rather thin but high wire. The only thing I was able to find was this. I will open it. As it says, it is flat aluminium wire. I think it is 0.3 millimeters high, one millimeter thick, and we have five meters. I decided for the aluminum wire because it is fairly easy to bend and yeah. What I saw in the two videos I watched about croissant, 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 um, was that the wire gets glued to a surface or you first bend a piece into the shape then glue it to a surface and after the glue dried you fill it with something it looks uh, it, it, in one in the one video that I watched about the real technique it was something that said it was sand which yeah i wasn't really able to understand exactly how you would make the real thing and to make this part a bit shorter i was not able to find very much about this technique i did see in other examples that it said sand as well so it might be that when you do enamel you have a sand kind of thing i don't i have no idea i was not able to find out anything maybe i'm just uh not very good at research i don't know but i wanted to try to glue the wire down onto some plastic with three different glues because that was the next thing I was not able to find out, what kind of glue was used. I uh, did sketch out three different little teeny tiny stained glass windows with one flower in the center, because that is what I just wanted to use for the first experiment. And I thought <coughs> windows like these I could still use in a dollhouse if I want to. And then I took the piece of paper I had, put it into some uh, clear plastic thingamajig and glued it to a piece of wood so I would be able to put it somewhere else if I want to use my desk. <laughs> because I was sure that this will take quite a long time and it did. I think this first video was done in January, so, but that was not the reason why. Um, for the rose, I used textile glue because 
through all my doll repaints, I noticed that it sticks quite nicely to plastic, but can still be removed. That was the idea behind it. Having it temporary, temporarily stuck to the um, surface, but still being able to remove it. So, yeah. I then did cut wire pieces to the size I needed, bent them in shape, and stuck them down onto our rows with textile glue. For the lily, I used Yuhu Extra, which is, uh, I think, rather strong glue that does attach quite a lot of things. It has more gel-like consistency, so it's not as runny as the uh, textile glue was, and it's more, yeah. The textile glue is more of a white glue, so you have the issue that you can't really see your sketch underneath after uh, placing it. So um, that was an issue I did not have with the Yuhu, but it was insanely sticky. <laughs> so mm, I'm not sure about this either. And our last flower window is the sunflower, which I turned into an iris halfway through. <laughs> because making the sunflower petals... Uh, no, I was not motiv motivated enough <laughs> to do that. <laughs> so, uh, I turned it into an iris, as I said, and I stuck this wire down with UV resin. So I had to harden every little piece in between. While I was gluing all of those three onto the surface, I did take care of the uh, areas where two pieces of wire meet with a bit more caution, just to make sure that they are closed off completely so that as soon as I put in the resin, it won't leak. So much was the theory. <laughs> All of them leaked. Some more, some less, but all three of them were not that big of a success as soon as I filled them with resin. One of my biggest issues with all three of the glues was that the nozzles of the glue bottles or tubes were quite large, so I was not able to get really thin amounts or fine amounts to really just have as much as I need. I always had a puddle of glue underneath that either did build uh, two thick walls, in the case of the UV resin and the Yuhu, or uh, yeah, little puddles on the ground and seep down in case of the um, textile glue. So, <laughs> I ordered some bottles with a tiny nozzle to at least try the textile glue again, because I did enjoy the process with the textile glue the most, I have to say. The only resin I had left laying around was a slow curing one made for thicker pieces. <laughs> Which was another mistake, it looks like, because in the end they were still sticky. And they are still sticky today. <laughs> And I'm not sure what it is, because even the thicker piece where I poured in the rest that I had left is still sticky. I have no idea what it was. Maybe it was too cold. But after 48 hours, I decided to 
Remove all three pieces from the plastic. All of them went quite nicely and it was quite easy to clean them up afterwards. Um, it looks like the resin does not stick too much to the uh, aluminium wire, so cleaning them up is rather easy. You still have to be careful to not uh, remove the wire from the pieces where it should stick. That happened with the next piece I make. <coughs> For the next attempt, <laughs> I decided to first of all use B6000 glue, which is, as far as I know, a, a kind of jewelry glue, um, and the textile glue in one of those nozzle bottles. Both of them have a little metal rod inside it that uh, inside that acts as a thinner needle point nose nozzle whatever you know what i mean i hope um and i decided to go a bit bigger <laughs> i printed out the crests of catherine of aragon and Anne Boleyn, and um yeah i went to work again <laughs> i first did the catherine of aragon one um yeah the same way i did it before but with the b6000 glue and for the uh, pomegranate seeds that are inside the crest i used some beads in resin and then I made the M. Berlin one <laughs> with the textile glue. Both of them worked fine. Both of them had the same issue again. As soon as I filled them up, the colors seeped into the different compartments and did mix up. I am still not sure if I have to be more accurate in the areas where they are meeting each other or if I have to do something completely different. I am not sure. I <laughs> did a rather large mistake in the end with the Anne Boleyn one. When I was done with the crest of Catherine of Aragon, I thought, okay, that works far too good. I don't need to try out the um, textile glue. <laughs> oh, how wrong I was. <laughs> because as you already see, the resin seeped out of the compartments again. I thought the B6000 glue was sealing it tight enough Obviously, it didn't. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I had to wait for the crest of Catherine to solidify before I could do some work at the Anne Boleyn crest. And because you now saw me four times gluing wire to foil, just can tell you it did work quite as nice as before, but maybe a bit nicer because I had the nozzle. Again, as soon as I filled it, it started to seep into each other. So I was not able, with none of my attempts, to get a tight seal. And then I did the great mistake and wanted to show this to my brother. I'm an idiot. I wanted to show my brother what I made and put it down onto my seat and forgot to put it down again. So now all of that went down there and here and everywhere. So Forgive me, but you will only see this one in the reveal. Yay!
to at least rescue some of the wire. <laughs> After it was halfway dried, I then, uh, yeah, tried to peel off all of the resin and to stick it back onto another sheet of plastic. Let's say I was able to rescue the top half, but at one point I gave up. <laughs> and with our little windows, because they were still sticky, after over two months, I tried to glaze them, which gave them a very interesting effect. They look frosted now, but anyway. I do still think there could be value in this technique. And I might do the other crests of the other wives of Henry. So I still have some crests to try out to yeah, find the right way. <laughs> if I ever did uh, do that, I will let you know. Otherwise... That was my attempt of doing stained glass-esque windows with a mixture of the cloisson croissant, croissant technique and resin. Here are the final images. I hope you did enjoy this. We will see us next week. Until then. <laughs> Bye.